very welcome to Beauty Slash channel. My name is Slash Tori, I'm owner and director of Permanent Makeup Studios and in this video I would like to show you how to do microblading with machine shading. I will show you in details how to combine these two techniques and what not to do. So let's dive in. Let me actually first introduce the B4 brows. As you can see, she didn't have any ends and look how it turned out after one month. This is a healed result. And this looks just so beautiful. Meanwhile, after the procedure, you can see the brows were quite red and quite dark, but everything went away and it just turned out into this beautiful healed result. So I'm so excited to share with you guys today's microblading process. Now, I will not spend too much time on explaining brow mapping technique in this video just because I made a separate video for that and I will upload it soon. But to let you guys know, even I draw the brow, I will always outline it with my white pencil because I want to see if it's even, I want to have the real uh, clear borders and the client, she should sit. She should not lie down because I want to always see her and see if the brows even if she lie down then i have to pick her up again to check and then lie down again it's very very troublesome so just i'm drawing her brows while she sit and lean to the wall and in the same position she should take the mirror and check her brows not while she lie down now the next step is for me to apply the numbing cream and I do not have to erase the pencil, I can leave it because it's safe for the skin, it's safe for the procedure, so I can freely do microblading on it. And I can have the nice outline after the numbing cream has been erased. Now just apply the foil and wait for about 20 to 25 minutes. And I use uh, numbing cream Amla 5% lidocaine. After about 25 minutes, I take out one side of the numbing cream. Very, very accurately, I slide away the numbing cream. And as you can see, all the pencils are there, so it's a good border for me for to do microblading. And just a tip, I divided the tissue into two pieces like this. It's very, very thin and it absorbs the numbing cream very well and not smudging uh, the pencil. If you are a beginner microblading artist, I suggest to draw your hair strokes first. It will give you kind of a guide, guide in lines for your microblading. Or you can simply just draw the direction for the strokes. Another way is to use a marker to put the dots around the shape to kind of guide you for the distance between your hair strokes. Because as you know, in microblading, we have to keep each hair stroke at a certain distance from each other to not blur out the healed results. And the last thing I add additional guidelines at the back of the brow. The first thing I do in microblading, I always start from the arch because I want to keep my eyebrows even. So I fix the outline of the arch first with my microblading and then only after that I'm going to fix the lower part of the brow so that I have complete outline of the tail of the brow. Then I can freely erase and do anything with it. Now before we continue I would like to remind you that I have two Instagram accounts. One is for inspiration, another one is to learn and ask. So let's connect and get back to the video. Now, answering your guys' question about the depth of the microblading, I would say first as shallow as possible because microblading is no way meant to be dark. And if you really want to know the depth, imagine you're doing this without the numbing cream. Actually, just try once to do this without the numbing cream and then by your clients screaming, you will know whether you're going too deep or not. Well, actually, if your depth is right, it's not really painful and it's very bearable to do without the numbing cream. Even sometimes people recommend to do without numbing cream for the better healing. Uh, as for me, I notice even with the numbing cream, it still heals nicely if your technique is good. And another tip, 
after I did one hair strokes, I actually do the second path right away. So I'll be injecting the ink in the same stroke right away. This way ink goes inside much better. Then I erase the ink and I check where I have to place more ink inside the stroke. The next step I move to the center of the brow to do microblading. My front of the brow is the last part because when I do the front of the brow I always touch with my fingers the middle part and it usually end up ruining the pencil outline. So I will try to fix the middle first. Here I slow down a speed a little bit of the video just for you to pay attention how I stretch the skin. I stretch it in two points and the third point is with my right hand which I microblead. So it's well stretched skin and it actually feels like fake skin in this case. And when I place the ink I do it with two times. So I place the ink on the skin first then I go through and then I go through one more time. This way the ink goes through the whole stroke. And just to point out one more time, I don't go too deep, even though it looks like I really cut. It's not true. It's very, very shallow. Now another great tip for you guys, please use, please clean your microblade because it gets dull and you want to clean it so it cuts very nice crisp strokes. I will speed up the process for a while since I don't have anything to add. So you can watch it and then I will continue. Now, right after I erase the ink, I do see if my strokes needs more ink and they do. So I do the second pass right away. And just for your reference, her skin is quite tight. And if I stretch the skin, I don't really see much ink inside. If your skin of the client is thin and you stretch, there's already a hole in there. You don't have to really cut again you just have to put the ink on top to soak and that will be enough because you don't want to leave any scarring and you don't want to overdo the microblading Now at this point I almost finished with her left eyebrow. Now I'm going to erase the ink from her right brow and apply the secondary numbing cream. And while it will numb uh, the brow, I will continue to finish her left eyebrow. Just rubbing the ink inside the skin. And now I'm going to check which part needs uh, the ink injections one more time. Also common question, what if I want to make 
my hair strokes darker should I just keep uh, doing second third path of the ink injection I would say you will just make the stroke blur so it's better to add darkness on the second procedure rather than keep adding and adding passes and passes of ink on the stroke. I only add additional ink to the strokes which are quite light and the cut is tight. I never ever add ink to the cut if I see it's quite open and if I see it's quite big. So never do that. Right now, after the microblading has been completed, after I'm satisfied with microblading, with the intensity of the color, with everything, then I can start to do my shading. Please do not do shading first, then microblading, because if you do mic uh, shading first, you will soften the skin. The skin will be already irritated, it will be soft. Then if you place the strokes on top, they will blur out during the healing. Uh, I won't go into much details of the speed of my machine or any other details as I prepared another video for that, but just briefly my speed is low and I stretch the skin exactly into two points, not into three because if you stretch it too much into three directions you kind of open the microblading cut and then you damage uh, the lines with this shading. So you have to mainly stretch only into two points. You can see that I stretch at the tail and at the middle of the brow. And then when you do the shading, you shade along, uh, along the strokes, parallel to the strokes. You do not shade perpendicular to the strokes. And another common question that you guys been asking me under YouTube videos, which I really appreciate you do, I really look through your questions, is uh, how many passes of shading should I do or how, sh how dark should I make uh, my client's eyebrows? And the answer is actually very simple. If your client wants to have light brows, don't go over that so if you shade and you see it's already has a nice light color probably better not to go over because chances are if her skin is very good it will absorb all the ink and the healed result will stay the same so there will be no losses in the ink but imagine if you overdid if you put more ink thinking that it will drop the color and then what if it did not then of course it's uh, it's a risk. So you have to explain to the client that first procedure is you mostly see how her skin reacts to the ink, how much ink does it take, and if it drops a lot of color, then next time we can freely risk free add much more. But to be safe, better not go to over. So I just judge by. Uh, the darkness of the brow I, I do here if I feel the color is dark enough as she wanted to have then I stop I don't go any over that and then at any point when you feel the skin is irritated or too red it's a time to put secondary numbing cream and wait under the foil and then go ahead and finish your brow uh, till you're satisfied with the intensity of the color. And here you go, very, very nice uh, result. And of course the color is really red and that's what you have to really prepare your client for. But then she will be so, so, so happy to see the healed result. You see how completely different it looks as it heals. Actually in reality it looks much way better because I think the camera takes out some colors from the brows so they don't like they don't look this light they look quite darker than this but from what I saw when she came back to me 
it just looks so natural and it really does look like she has a full brows with very real looking hair strokes thank you guys so much for watching this video and again if you have any questions please leave your question under this video and if you have any suggestions for the next video or you would like me to record any video on your question please also comment below and i'll see you in the next videos